Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the next segment of Weather Center Nazario. I wanted to take a brief moment this afternoon to update everyone with the latest information. We have all the 12Z model data in for this afternoon for all operational model runs. I wanted to take a second to sift through it all and give you guys an update before we head into next week. I'm trying to do this as fast as I can. I'm a little short on time this afternoon, so please forgive me. You already know the drill. If you liked what you see, please like, share, and subscribe to the page if you already haven't done for continuous updates as we go through the remainder of hurricane season as well as local weather for those of you here in Central Florida, the Sunshine State. Now, without further ado, fasten your seatbelts, everybody. Let's jump right in. Okay, folks, so this is what the weather community is a buzz about today, and that's exactly why I'm making this video for the sake of just pumping out this update. We finally have a disturbance with a 20% chance of development in the Atlantic Basin over the next seven days. Nothing too crazy, but this is kind of what we've been alluding to over the last couple update videos. This is expected to track off to the west at about 15, 20 miles per hour. The biggest determinant here is going to be what happens with this high pressure over the mid-Atlantic basin, as well as different variables to include the wind shear that we've been talking about all season long and the dry air that is still kind of hanging out doing its thing over much of the Atlantic at this time. However, looking into some of the latest model information, it looks like that dry air is finally going to start to wash out with such a rapid influx of moisture going on, which brings me right to my next panel. This is the area I'd like us to fixate on. I'll go ahead and highlight it with my red pen. If you look, there is an abundance of moist air advection occurring off the Horn of Africa right now. There is still a little bit of dry air pumping its way west across the Atlantic, especially the central parts of the Atlantic, the northern apex of the MDR, but you can see just a continuous stream of convection and moisture pushing, and I'm talking rapidly pushing westward. This, I think, is really going to help to enhance what kind of tropical activity we see over the next coming weeks, as well as when we round out into the next month of September. I'll go ahead and zoom us in just a little bit. Let me get that ink out of the way. This is going to be our invest area right here. This circulation this kind of conglomeration, if you will, of thunderstorm activity working its way off the African coast, almost fully over water at this point. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like we have an identifiable center of circulation just yet, but I would imagine over the next three to five days, especially once this dry air can get in far enough downstream of it, we're going to start to see a little bit of a semblance of some cyclonic curvature on the visible satellite. I'm not going to switch over to that at this time because unfortunately we're losing the daylight out in that portion of the globe. Let's take a quick look at the GFS operational run. This is for 12Z as of today. We'll go forward in time. I'll let the model loop. You can see that we have a tremendous amount of moist air out there indicated by the precip bands on the model. And even the GFS is expecting some northward movement from this system as it develops and undergoes a little bit further cyclogenesis. Kind of has it re uh, resembling a weak signature. Not expecting a whole lot of development with this just yet, but as you can see, we have some potent synoptic scale features, a lot of good frontal systems coming off the northeastern portions of North America that's really going to help to kick our high pressure system that was once situated over the mid-Atlantic, or the central Atlantic, I should say, out toward the Azores Islands, and that's exactly why this system is going to be able to escape off to the northwest, I believe, sooner than later. One of the biggest issues we're having right now with the most recent up-to-date, not only ensemble products, but operational products is all of this tropical moisture that's in the Caribbean area. The Western Caribbean to be exact, you can see some pretty intense thunderstorm activity indicated through here. I'll go ahead and draw in a little bit of a box so you guys can fixate on it like I am. There's been a number of models, both GFS, European, the ensembles with both platforms, as well as the Canadian and a little bit of the Icon. The Icon doesn't go out that far, so I'm only seeing blobs of moisture proceeding through the Caribbean. But a lot of folks are beginning to fixate on this because we're losing that El Nino shear, and there is a lot more abundance of upward vertical motion and moisture present in the Caribbean, as well as those sea surface temps and ocean heat content that we've talked about on the last two videos of mine. The GFS wants to spin something up as a very disorganized blob of moisture before undergoing a bit of cyclogenesis over those extremely hot waters of the Gulf of Mexico and then pushing into the Gulf Coast states. So those of you who may be watching, may or may not be watching along the Gulf Coast, we need to start paying attention to these systems. There are going to be a few good ingredients in the near distant future that could help something organize, whether it goes across the Caribbean, over Cuba, closer to the peninsula of Florida, or further westward as this most recent run of the GFS is indicating towards Louisiana, Texas. Regardless, it's definitely something we want to keep an eye on. 
I'm going to fast forward here. We're going to keep this video short and sweet. This is simply just a tropical update. I wanted to produce some information on the NHC's update as well as talk a little bit about ensembles. This is the UK model. I wanted to pull this up because it is also another reliable model platform. This is 500 millibar vorticity spinach in the upper atmosphere. And you can see that there is a tremendous amount of tropical vortices in the upper levels that even the UK model is pinging on. I could highlight four if not five different circulation centers. The one I'd like you to pay close attention to is I pay and through the model run is going to be this one right here, advecting west-northwest. I'll go ahead and delete the ink and proceed through the rest of the loop. And as you can see, as it begins to enter the Caribbean, we see a little bit of deepening going on and increased amounts of spin or vorticity towards the center of circulation just as it moves through the windward-leeward islands. This, I believe, is going to be the entity that tracks off to the west-northwest, eventually northwest, with all this upper-level ridging to its north and may get its act together sooner than later. We also have a couple other vorticity couplets out here over the Atlantic, the MDR especially, so things are going to start to finally open up. Again, like I had posted a couple days ago, the fireworks show is yet to come, but we're currently setting up, folks. Mother Nature's kind of priming her cannons. I'm going to switch gears. We're going to go to the ensembles. This is the latest Euro 12Z ensembles, and I wanted to just give you a broad brushed overview of what the model's looking at. This is 150 hours into the loop. Wonderful ensemble member agreement that something's going to form in the MDR. I believe this is probably our 20% disturbance that's out there right now. Within the next 48, 72 hours, I do project that that's going to start to go up, especially as that dry air gets washed out with the tremendous amounts of moisture advection that we're seeing currently. As we go forward in time, we'll go out to 270. 70 hours and you can see that there is a huge a huge model spread if i were to go ahead and blueprint i'll even use blue ink for you guys if i were to blueprint a quote projected path as nhc likes to say my cone would be that large in width and it would stem from the eastern extent of the mdr and move just in this kind of fashion we are projecting that the synoptic systems, the baroclinic systems that are coming off the northeast coast of Conus, are going to help to erode our subtropical high aloft, as well as our Bermuda Azores high that's sitting over the central Atlantic, which is why we're seeing this little bit of an escape route to the north-northwest as opposed to west-northwest. Will we have to monitor? Will we kind of have to extrapolate the intensity of the systems coming off the continental U.S.? Absolutely, which is, I think, why the model has a few very, very major hurricane-looking ensemble products, or ensemble members, I should say, working their way towards the southeast United States, some of, with, some of which, excuse me, want to go towards the peninsula of Florida, Georgia, and the Carolinas, Virginia area. So, we got to be on guard, everybody. There's enough in the atmosphere down the road. Granted, this is... 10 to 12 days out, of course. I'm going to throw that disclaimer out there. But things are going to start to amp up. This is going to be when things finally begin to come uncapped. Switching over to the GFS, latest GFS ensembles for around the same time. This is 150 hours out. Again, very good ensemble member agreement that something's going to form, albeit very weak. We'll go out to 270 hours, and we're seeing the same northwestward trend as that high breaks down to the north of whatever this disturbance decides to form up into. And then at the end of the run, one thing I would like to turn your attention to that's been trending on the GFS is the Gulf of Mexico and the very western tip of the Caribbean. Caribbean Ocean or the Caribbean Sea. There are a lot of ensemble members pinging on some sort of a circulation forming out there. Conditions are a lot more favorable in the Gulf of Mexico. No wind shear, tremendous heat, lots of heat. I'm talking excruciating heat. We've seen uh, temps setting records in South Florida as of recently because they've been so hot. And the reason I bring this up is because we could see a Texas-Louisiana landfall, and some of the ensemble members want to trend it towards the Florida Peninsula a la Hurricane Charlie Ian a few years ago. So with that being said, I more or less want to keep everyone's radar up and running. We should be looking at this, have our head on the swivel, do our due diligence, and kind of monitor day to day. Nothing crazy, nothing crazy at all, just kind of pay attention check in every now and again. A lot of us YouTube forecasters are going to start producing a lot more content on this material as we go through time. That'll wrap up today's update video. Ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to keep it short and sweet. This is probably going to be my shortest video, especially once I get finished with editing. Thank you all for tuning in. Once again, please like, share, and subscribe to my Weather Center Nazario page if you haven't done so already. As the tropics get more active, I intend to get more active myself. I got to start stretching my YouTube legs and filming more routine content for everybody, especially once there are entities out there in the tropical basin worth talking about and keeping you folks on a heads-up display about, okay?
So thank you for tuning in. I hope you all have had a wonderful weekend. Sunday is almost over. A new week is nearly upon us. A new week of fresh information. A wonderful start to the week. I'm wishing all of you watching. This is Weather Senna Nazario, signing out.